All right, this is our tutorial video on uh, 4.1.3 conditional probability. Um, first things first, if you want to pause your screen and get the definitions down, conditional probability definition and the notation is here. Um, conditional probability is probability that has restrictions that affect the total number of outcomes possible, meaning some event has occurred prior to this and changes the total number of outcomes possible. For instance, in this example that I'm giving here, what's the probability that you draw an ace out of a deck of cards given that the card is a red card? So that means I'm not looking at all 52 cards. I'm only looking at the 26 that are red. So that changed my sample size from 52 to 26, which means 26 is now my total number that I could get at, instead of 52. Um, let's just kind of put that into motion a little bit with this uh, frequency table here. Um, again, a frequency table is just a way of organizing data in this manner here. All right, so um, using this table, we're going to go ahead and total up the rows and columns, and then we're going to answer the conditional probabilities. All right, uh, 7 and 8 makes 15, 7 and 6 makes 13, 8 and 6 makes 14, 7 and 7 makes 14, 14 and 14 is 28, and that should add up to the same thing that this column does, 15 and 13, and it does. So we know that we did that right, so now we got our total numbers. Okay, A, the probability that you did a chore given that you're male. So that means I'm only looking at the males. I'm not looking at all 28 people. I'm only looking at the males. So something out of 15. So yes is 7 out of 15. Our next example is the probability that you are a female given you've already done a chore. So that means I'm only looking at the people who have done a chore, this column right here. So not out of 28, but out of 14. So of the people who have done a chore, those 14 people, seven of them are females. Now we need to make sure we reduce this fraction. We don't want to leave it like this. That reduces to one half. So this next example gives us a great way of looking at two kind of contrasting probabilities here. One's conditional and one's not. So got to make sure that you're paying attention. First things first, A has this bar here, which indicates given that, which is a conditional probability. Over here, D does not have that. So the word and is not a condition as much as this bar right here is so this should be out of the total and this should be just out of the recycled options I've gone ahead and totaled up our columns and rows and they all add up to 217 which is good so it's the same thing left right and up and down so here we go let's do the two probabilities so you can see the difference between a and D so a is probability that it's a paper product given that it's recycled so I'm only looking out of this recycled column, not all 217 items, only the recycled column. So it's going to be out of 60.7. So paper would be 34.9. And just double check it in our calculator what that would be. And we would get 0 0.57 or 57%. Okay, now contrast that with D which says the probability that the item is glass and recycled. So that means I'm looking here at this 2.9, but it's not given that something. It's out of everything. So it's out of this 217. So that will be 2.9 out of 217, which is very different from the previous problem. So 2.9 out of 217, that is 0 0.013 or 1.3 percent. Here's our formula for conditional probability. So if you just would prefer to use a formula instead of kind of the problem solving that we're doing previously, you can use this formula. Whereas the probability of A and B divided by the probability of A. So we're going to do that in motion and in this next example as well as a tree diagram and you can kind of see both things as they work. Okay, so here's the example that we're going to use with the tree diagram. Um, probability of raining in Midtown. All right, so this is the information that we're talking about. It's, it's either going to rain or it's not going to rain. 
and then either Joe's bus is going to be late or not be late. So that's the different scenarios you see branched out on this tree, rain and not rain here. Those are two options. And then if it's raining, then the bus is either late or not late. If it's not raining, then the bus is either late or not late. And we took all the probabilities from the problem and put them in and then subtracted from one to get the other probability. So for instance, if it's rainy, the probability that's not rainy is three fourths, one fourth that it is raining, three fourths that's not raining. Those two add up to one. All right. So the probability that Joe's bus is late is going to be the two different scenarios. So it's going to be um, the probability that the when it's when it's raining, it's 25 percent of the time. And so 33 percent of the time which I turned these fractions into decimals for you. 25% of the time it's raining and 33% of the time that it's raining, the bus is late. So that's one scenario that the bus is late. And 75% of the time it's not raining, but on those non-rainy days, 17% of the time it still is late. So that's the two different scenarios where the bus would be late. So we add all of those options together and we get 0.21. Now, that's different from the condition that's put on by Joe's bus is late. So if Joe's bus is late, that's going to be this 21% that we're already talking about. And then it's raining is this um, scenario. But remember, it's, it's raining provided that or given that the bus is late. So let's see if we can use the formula to help us with this. So if we use the formula, that means that the probability that it's raining given that Joe's bus is late will look like this. It'll be the probability it's raining and the bus is late divided by the probability that the bus is late. Okay, well the probability that it's raining and the bus is late would be this group right here. The one-fourth and the one-third. So that, what we, what we did here, and that was 0.08. So that's our numerator. And then the probability that the bus was late in general is that 0.21 that we did earlier. So using the formula, 0.08 divided by 0.21 is 0.38 or 38%. Finish up with this example, number four. Uh, the probability that a student in Millbrook has brown hair is four-fifths. Given the student has brown hair, the probability they are female is two-thirds. So that's a conditional probability that they already gave us. And then the probability a non-brown hair student is female is two-fifths. So A, find the probability that a student is female is what we're looking for here. Okay, so let's get organized and get this set up. So the probability that a Millbrook student is female, right away they tell us that the information that we have is that a Millbrook student, the probability that a Millbrook student has brown hair is four-fifths. So that means either they have brown hair or they don't. So four-fifths of the time they have brown hair. That means one-fifth of the time they have, they don't have brown hair. Then the options off of that are going to be male and female. And they said that given that the student has brown hair, the probability they are female is two-thirds. So that means one-third of the time they are male. All right. And then they told us the probability that a non-brown-haired student is female is two-fifths. So that means that the non-brown-haired males is three-fifths. So we got our tree diagram organized now we want to try to focus in on the scenario find the probability that a student is female so what we've got to do is we've got to get the two female scenarios the first female scenarios is if she has brown hair so that will be four-fifths times the females of that group two-thirds so that's my scenario that has uh, the brown haired females and then the non brown haired females is one-fifth times the two-fifths. So this is going to give us our two scenarios, so brown-haired females and non-brown-haired females. Those probabilities added together will give me the total probability here for scenario A. 
So let's go ahead and grab our calculators to help with this. These added together are 0.61 or 61%. That's for my A scenario. Now let's talk about B. Conditional probability in B, brown hair, given that they are not a female, I can use my formula here. So that would be the probability that they're brown and that they have brown hair and they're not a female divided by the probability that they're not a female. So what I need to do is figure out what these probabilities are for the numerator and denominator, and then I'll go ahead and solve. When you fill in your formula, 0.27 represents the probability of a brown-haired male, and 0.27 plus 0.12 is the probability of brown-haired males and non-brown-haired males. So that's the total number of, or sorry, brown-haired males and non-brown-haired males, which would be the total of the non-females or the total of the males. So when you type this into your calculator, you would get 0.69 or 69% of the time you would find that a brown-haired, that a non-female or a male would have brown hair.